The storm had been brewing for hours, and the crew of the Phantom's Revenge had been on edge since they first spotted the ominous clouds on the horizon. But as the wind picked up and the waves grew higher, they knew that their worst fears had been realized. They were facing the legendary Kraken of the Sea. The sailors had heard stories of the Kraken since they were children, whispered in hushed tones by their elders. They knew that it was a monstrous creature with tentacles that could crush a ship and a hunger for human flesh. But they had always thought such tales were just that, tales meant to scare children into behaving. But now, as they saw the Kraken's tentacles rise from the inky depths of the ocean, they knew that the stories were all too real. The tentacles were as thick as tree trunks, and they writhed and twisted in the air like serpents. The sailors could hear the cracking of wood as the Kraken began to squeeze the ship in its grip. The captain shouted orders, and the sailors scrambled to action trying to free the ship from the Kraken's deadly embrace. But no matter what they did, they couldn't break free. The Kraken's grip was too strong, and the ship was being pulled down into the depths of the ocean. As the ship went under, the sailors fought desperately to cling to anything that they could find. They knew that they were facing certain death, and they refused to go down without a fight. The Kraken's tentacles dragged them under, and they could feel the crushing pressure of the water all around them. But then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the Kraken released its grip on the ship. The sailors looked up in disbelief as they saw the Kraken's tentacles disappear back into the depths of the dark ocean. They knew that they had been spared, but they also knew that they had come face to face with the true monster of the sea. And from that day forward, they never sailed the waters without fear of the Kraken's deadly embrace. In the depths of the ocean, there lies a creature of myth and legend, a beast feared by sailors and seafarers for centuries. This creature is known as the Kraken, a giant sea monster said to dwell in the darkest depths of the ocean, waiting to rise up and drag ships and their crews to their watery graves. The Kraken is one of the most terrifying creatures of Norse mythology a legendary sea monster that lurks in the deep waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. The Kraken has been described as a huge squid or octopus with tentacles that can reach more than a mile long and eyes the size of dinner plates. The Kraken can attack ships, drag them down to the depths, and devour the sailors as its prey. The Kraken is perhaps the largest monster ever imagined by mankind. In Nordic folklore, it was said to haunt the seas from Norway through Iceland and all the way to Greenland. The Kraken had a knack for harassing ships and many pseudoscientific reports, including official naval ones, said it would attack vessels with its strong arms. If the strategy fell, the beast would start swimming in circles around the ship, creating a fierce maelstrom to drag the vessel down. Of course, to be worth its soul, a monster needs to have a taste for human flesh. Legend says that the Kraken could devour a ship's entire crew at once. But despite its fearsome reputation, the monster could also bring benefits. It swam accompanied by huge schools of fish that cascaded down its back when it emerged from the water. Brave fishermen could thus risk going near the beast to secure a bounteous catch. 
The history of the Kraken goes back to an account written in 1180 by King Svir of Norway. As with many legends, the Kraken started with something real, based on sightings of a real animal, the giant squid. For the ancient navigators, the sea was treacherous and dangerous, hiding a horde of monsters in its inconceivable depths. Any encounter with an unknown animal could gain a mythological edge from sailors' stories. After all, the tale rose in the telling. The Kraken has been compared to other sea monsters from different mythologies, such as the Greek Skyla and Charybdis, who also threatened sailors and ships. However, the Kraken has a unique place in the Scandinavian folklore, as it represents the power and mystery of the ocean. The Kraken was also believed to have a connection to the god of the sea, Loki, who was known for his mischief and trickery. According to Norwegian informants, the Kraken's body measured many miles in length, and when it surfaced, it seemed to cover the whole sea, and having many heads and a number of claws. With its claws, it captured its prey, which included ships and men, fish and animals, carrying its victims back into the depths. The earliest descriptions of the Kraken don't give away too much information. They dwell on the creature's size, claiming that he is the hugest monster in the sea. He is so large that he can swallow ships and whales. So large that his body can be mistaken for land, his mouth for a sound, and his teeth for boulders. So large that his movement can create whirlpools. Kraken is said to dwell in the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. While the details of the Kraken's habitat and behavior vary depending on the legend, there are certain characteristics that are commonly associated with this legendary creature. The Kraken is said to live so far below the surface where sunlight cannot penetrate. Some legends suggest that the Kraken inhabits underwater caves while others describe it as a nomadic creature that roams the ocean depths. In Mari Malta Leighton goes the old saying, in the ocean many things are hidden, and it's true enough. There is still much we don't know about what lurks in the depths, save for wonders that the occasional submersible dive turns up. But for millennia, humans have simply taken to guessing what could be swimming Earth's oceans. Europeans, for instance, just assumed for a long while that every land critter had a counterpart in the sea. Hence, sea rhinos and sea cows and even the sea monks and sea bishops, the aquatic representatives of the human race. Fantastically wrong. It's okay to be wrong, even fantastically so, because when it comes to understanding our world, mistakes mean progress. From folklore to pure science, these are history's most bizarre theories. Some of these beasts, though, are more grounded in reality than others. And none of these are more famed or feared or strangely real than the Kraken, also known somewhat awesomely in lore as the Sea Mischief, a legendary tentacled giant so powerful that it can pull down ships. Cross this monster and you'll find yourself praying there's a sea bishop or two in the depths to attend to your corpse. This is a decidedly Nordic tell, 
contrary to the supposed rampages of the Kraken around Greece in 1981's awesome film Clash of the Titans, and its recent remake that should have been loaded onto a ship and sunk to the bottom of the ocean while it was still just a script. The Kraken, however, is many beasts in one, a perfectly terrifying amalgamation of the worst sea monsters humanity has ever dreamed up. Perhaps the most detailed description of the Kraken comes from the Danish historian Eric Pontapaden in his Natural History of Norway from 1755. He notes that the beast is round, flat, and full of arms or branches and is the largest and most surprising of all the animal creation. He cites various fishermen who unanimously affirm and without the least variation in their accounts that if you row out several miles into the Norwegian sea in the summer, you're in serious danger of falling victim to the Kraken. You'll know when you start reeling in an inordinate amount of fish, it's the Kraken, you see, that's scaring them toward the surface. But escaping from its clutches is not impossible. Accomplished rowers can hightail it out of there, and when they find themselves out of danger, they lie upon their oars. And after a few minutes, they see this enormous monster come up to the surface of the water. Its back is a mile and a half in circumference, and looks at first like a, a number of small islands. This is an echo of another mythical sea critter, the island well, a beast so huge that sailors mistake it for land and anchor to it, and once they build a fire on its back, it heaves up and drags them all to their doom. The Kraken is far more dexterous in its attacks. The emergence of this supposed island is described in great detail. Here and there, a larger rising is observed like sandbanks, on which various kinds of small fishes are seen continuously leaping about until they roll off into the water from the sides of it. At last, several bright points or horns appear, which grow thicker and thicker the higher they rise above the surface of the water, and sometimes they stand up as high and as large as the mast of middle-sized vessels. These horns are, of course, its dreaded arms. If the Kraken doesn't yank you down directly, the whirlpool that it forms will finish the task. This, too, is an echo of another mythical sea monster, Charybdis, of the Odyssey fame. As Odysseus sailed through the Strait of Messina between Sicily and mainland Italy, he was warned to avoid the churning whirlpool that is Charybdis in favor of taking his chances with Scylla at the opposite coast. And Skyla also finds her way into the Kraken myth, for she too was tentacled, snatching Odysseus' men and eating them alive. The Kraken, though, is happy to make do just eating fish and that it has a strong and peculiar scent, which it can emit at certain times, and by means of which it beguiles and draws other fish to come in and heaps about it. And, appropriately enough, it uses the fish that it has devoured to lure even more fish by using its who as lure. A great many old fisherman says that its evacuation colors the surface of the water, which appears quite thick and turbid. They describe it in great detail, saying, this muddiness is said to be so very agreeable to the smell or taste of 
other fishes, or to both, that they gather together from all parts to it, and keep that for the purpose directly over the kraken. He then opens his arms, or horns, seizes and swallows his welcome guest, and converts them, after the due time by digestion, into a bait for other fish of the same kind. Ah, the circle of life. Such a creature is in no way capable of totally mucking up the waters around it with poop, but it certainly is with a blast of ink. Almost all cephalopods, a family that in addition to squid contains octopuses and cuttlefish, will ink in self-defense if, say, hauled up by fishermen. Some species will quite cleverly also deploy mucus with the ink to create pseudomorphs, false bodies that distract would-be predators. The inking behavior of the giant squid, though, along with pretty much all of its other behaviors, remains mysterious. While they have a long haunt in folklore, only a precious few specimens have ever been known to science. But looking at other squid species, we can infer how giant squid operate. Though no one has seen it firsthand, scientists speculate that the giant squid hunts by hanging motionless in the water column, with the tip of its mantle pointed up and its two long tentacles dangling below. All of its other much shorter tentacles aren't actually tentacles, they're referred to as arms. Here it simply waits for fish or other squid to mender into its grasp of suction cups, which are lined with tiny teeth. The giant squid then reels its prey to the beak that is its mouth and to a pretty horrible death by being slowly pecked away, mouthful by mouthful. It's this beak that reveals what the giant squid spends its life trying to avoid. The sperm well. The stomachs of dead sperm wells can be positively packed with the beaks of giant squid, the only bit the well has a hard time digesting. It's also not uncommon to come across living sperm wells with circular scars around their mouths. The telltale signs of battles with enormous squid desperately flailing their arms and digging into their foes with serrated suckers. There is a squid, though, that makes the giant squid look downright cuddly. Oh, and also swiveling hooks on its suction cups instead of serrated edges. Swiveling hooks. But, and I hate to disappoint you here, the colossal squid is probably extremely lackadaisical by one estimate using up to 600 times less energy than similarly sized predators. Like the giant squid, it likely sits and wait for prey instead of running them down. So the legend of the Kraken is a bit over the top, sure, but it nevertheless serves as an enduring mismatch of a myth, borrowing from all manner of European tales. And as we explore more and more of the world's oceans, we'll doubtless answer that many questions swirling around the giant and colossal squid, such as, is that poop or ink I'm seeing here? Overall, the Kraken's behavior is shrouded in mystery and intrigue making it one of the most fascinating and enduring figures of myth and legend. The cultural significance of the Kraken can be seen in various aspects of Scandinavian culture and beyond. The Kraken was often depicted as a fearsome creature that could bring destruction and chaos to those who crossed its path. The creature was sometimes seen as a symbol of unpredictable and dangerous natures of the sea, 
and was used to explain the unexplained disappearances of the ships and sailors. In literature and popular culture, the Kraken has been a popular subject for writers and artists for centuries. The creature has been featured in numerous works of fiction, including Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, The Kraken. The Kraken has also appeared in movies, television shows, and video games, and has become a popular icon in the fantasy and horror genres. In modern times, the Kraken has also taken on new meanings and associations. The creature has been used as a symbol of rebellion and resistance, and has been adopted as a mascot by various groups and associations. The Kraken has also been associated with environmentalism and conservation, and has been used to draw attention to the threats facing the world's oceans and marine life. The Kraken remains an enduring symbol of the power and mystery of the sea, and its cultural significance continues to evolve and adapt to new contexts and interpretations. There are no scientific bases on the Kraken, being a legendary creature. The earliest description of the Kraken comes from Scandinavian folklore, where it was believed to be a giant squid or octopus-like creature that could sink ships and drag sailors to their doom. However, there is no evidence that such a creature ever existed. In modern times, the Kraken has been popularized in literature and film, often depicted as a giant cephalod with tentacles that can reach hundreds of feet in length. While there are certainly large squid and octopus species that exist in the ocean, none have been found to match the size and capabilities attributed to the Kraken in myth and legend. The Kraken has also been a popular subject in Clash of the Titans and Pirate of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Its legacy as a legendary sea monster continues to captivate the imaginations of people around the world. The Kraken remains a fascinating and fearsome symbol of the unknown and the dangerous, a creature that can challenge the bravest of heroes and the strongest of ships. While we may never know for certain whether the Kraken truly exists, its legend continues to fascinate and enthrall us, reminding us of the enduring power of myth and mysteries of the ocean. And with that, I leave you with a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, The Kraken. Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath in the abyssal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the Kraken sleepeth, faintest sunlight flee, about his shadowy sides, above him swell, huge sponges of millennial growth and height. And far away into the sickly light, from many a wondrous grot and secret sail, unnumbered and enormous pulpi, winnow with giant arms the slumber in green. There hath he lain for ages, and will lie, battening upon huge sea worms in his sleep, until the latter fire shall heat the deep. Then once by man and angels to be seen, in roaring he shall rise, and on the surface die.
thank you all for watching. Please leave me a comment, and if you, if you liked it, please share it out more. Thank you guys again. See you next time on Tales Told in the Dark.